II, the United States and Japan engaged in a series of carrier battles that would play a crucial role in deciding the battle for the Pacific. With the outcome in doubt, the U.S. Navy unleashed a secret weapon called the VT Fuse, which devastated Japanese aircraft with unmatched lethality. If you were making a list of the most important technological breakthroughs that came out of World War II, just below the atomic bomb and radar in general, you would list the VT fuse, which absolutely transformed the effectiveness of anti-aircraft fire. Before the U.S. became involved in the Second World War, the Navy realized that a revolutionary advance in anti-aircraft fuses would be necessary to combat the growing effectiveness of the airplane. To shoot down an airplane required an average of 2,400 rounds of ammunition early in the war. Hitting an aircraft moving at high speed in three dimensions with a gun on a ship is one of the most difficult feats in warfare. There's simply too many variables to be accurately predicted. The difficulty in shooting down enemy aircraft was largely due to the inadequacies associated with anti-aircraft fuses. A fuse is either a mechanical or electronic detonating device designed to set off the bursting charge of a projectile, bomb, or torpedo. Although all fuses serve the same function, the triggering mechanism varies. Two different types of fuses were available to uh, the major navies. Uh, one type of fuse was the contact fuse. Uh, that is, the uh, projectile actually had to hit the aircraft for the fuse to detonate the projectile. Uh, the chances of hitting an aircraft were slender. A better fuse was a fuse activated by time. The gunners would set the fuse as the projectile was loaded into the gun. The fuse would detonate uh, after a predetermined time. If your guesstimate is off by uh, even a couple of seconds, the projectile will be hopelessly out of range of the aircraft. The remedy was to create a fuse that used a high frequency signal to detonate within proximity of the target. The task of finding a high frequency mechanism small enough to fit on an artillery shell and durable enough to withstand the 20,000 g-force associated with being shot out of a gun were believed to be too difficult to overcome. But at the Applied Physics Laboratory at Johns Hopkins University, physicist Merle Tuve and a group of scientists, engineers, and ham radio experts embraced the challenge. Merle was a genius. He was a rough, tough, slightly profane individual. I hated the man, but hate and love are very close. Early in the program, Tube determined that using radio frequencies would be the most practical way to create an effective proximity fuse. A radio proximity fuse works by emitting radio frequencies from an oscillator, which bounce off the reflective surface of an object such as an enemy aircraft. The reflected pulse then returns amplified, triggering the fuse detonator and exploding the projectile. If detonation occurs close enough to the target, fragments from the exploding shell will destroy it. The problems that were faced in the development of a proximity fuse were first to choose the mechanism, the type of fuse. We did not have transistors, and therefore were dependent upon vacuum tubes. Vacuum tubes were not intended for this class of environment. However, early experimentation found that there was at least the potential for making the commercial sub-miniature vacuum tubes uh, withstand that environment. In 1941, Miniature commercial vacuum tubes engineered by Sylvania and others were sent to the Applied Physics Laboratory. There, they were incorporated into the first test fuses, named the Mark 32 VT fuse. Every day we would build perhaps 30 fuse units that would be driven to a test field and fired the following day. Meanwhile, we would be building another 
group of fuses according to a new prescription. Under a veil of secrecy, the Applied Physics Laboratory worked on perfecting the radio proximity fuse for the next 18 months. In January 1942, the VT fuse reached a success rate of 50% when within proximity of its target. Deemed more effective than the saturation shelling needed for contact and time fuses, the U.S. Ordnance Committee fully endorsed the VT fuse project. Mass production began immediately. We didn't work eight-hour days. We worked whatever the job called for. On one occasion, I worked for 48 hours straight. And everybody else desperately wanted to contribute toward the winning of that war. The pressures were huge. In January of 1943, a naval anti-aircraft gun equipped with the first batch of proximity-fused projectiles shot down an attacking Japanese plane. One target, one kill. The proximity fuse had arrived. Earlier, it took 2,400 shells to bring down an aircraft. The number now was 400. So you have a six-fold increase in uh, anti-aircraft effectiveness with this fuse. Proximity fuses were quickly sent to the naval fleet in the Pacific. In the battle for the Philippine Sea, the fuse decimated Japanese aircraft. Every one of the American ships was loaded with radio proximity fuses. They shot down Japanese planes by the hundreds. 395 planes were lost by the Japanese, which was 92% of the planes they brought to the event. The battle was the culminating battle of the Pacific. But concerns about America's secret weapon falling into enemy hands led the Navy to disallow its use over land until December of 1944. At the Battle of the Bulge, VT-fused artillery shells laid waste to the Germans. The first time it was used, it stopped a German push about 50 miles into the Bulge, and about 400 Germans were killed. Projectiles would come in and they would burst at a relatively uniform height and synchronization, and you would have this immense barrage of exploding shells just above the ground, spraying the hail of shrapnel that was deadly. The lethal impact of America's secret weapon was perhaps summed up best by a letter from General George S. Patton who wrote, the new shell with the funny fuse is devastating. I think that when all armies get this shell, we will have to devise some new method of warfare. Patton's formal testimony officially solidified the VT fuse as one of World War II's deadliest weapons. <laughs>